Okay, hello everybody uh, and welcome. I am Ilaria from Doxity and I'm happy to be here today to moderate this webinar in partnership with NHH Norwegian School of Economics. Let's just wait a few more moments to let everyone connect and then we will start our session. So in the meanwhile, if you, uh, it would be great if you say hello to us and tell us from what part of the world you are connecting. And if you have any questions during the webinar, just drop them in the Q&A box and we'll do our best to answer them in the second part of the event. So thank you very much. Okay, we have Jose from Ecuador. Hello, Jose, welcome. And thanks for being here with us today. Oh, we have also someone from India. Hello. Hello, everybody. Hi, Sebastian. Welcome. Thanks for being with us. Okay, so then I think we can officially start our session. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to this webinar in partnership with NHH Norwegian School of Economics. My name is Ilaria. I am from Doc City, and it's my pleasure to moderate this webinar today that will allow us to explore the study opportunities at NHH and also give us a flavor of Norway. Uh, if you're interested in getting a certificate of attendance from Doc City, stay tuned and more info will come during the webinar. And also, if you have any questions during the session, just drop them in the Q&A box and we'll answer them in the second part of the event. And I now leave the floor to Marta Santor from NHH, NHH sorry, Student Recruitment Department that is going to introduce the topics that will be covered throughout the session. So thanks again for joining us and I, hope, I really hope you'll enjoy the webinar. And the floor is yours, Martha. Thank you everybody also to all our speakers for their time and for joining us here today. Thank you. Thank you, Ilaria, and um, welcome. And thank you for your interest in the master's program at NHH, the Norwegian School of Economics. My name is Marta Santorv and I am responsible for student recruitment here at NHH. I'm here today together with my students, colleagues, and alumni, and we would like to tell you about more about our school, our program, admission, and the career life after NHH. And we're also inviting you, as, she's, uh, as Ilaria said, to write in questions in the chat so that we, in the end of this session, are able to answer any question you might have. NHH is located in Bergen, Norway's second largest city. Around 10% of the population are students, and this is making Bergen a vibrant and youthful environment. And the Bergen region has the ideal combination of nature, culture, and exciting urban life all year around. Bergen has a small, small charm uh, atmosphere. And it's famous for its seven mountains that surround the city center. Some of them you can even see here on the photo. You can go for a hike after class, take a refreshing bath in the ocean, or you can enjoy a warm cup of coffee in the many cafes in the city center. And it's all very close to you right outside your door. And on the photo here, you see international students rafting in the fjords during the first week at NHH. So there's a lot of things happening for the international students around campus. As you can see, Bergen has a compact city center and we are well to uh, uh, and we are well known to have an active innovation and startup environment. As well as more traditional industries like aquaculture, shipping and the offshore petroleum industry and subsea technology. Bergen is also a very cultural uh, city, having a lively music scene and host many great concerts and theaters throughout the year. 
if you're more the active type and you're into, for example, skiing, you can try uh, popular skiing resorts close by Bergen, such as Vos, Myrkdal, and Jailo. And the scenery in the western part of Norway, relatively close to Bergen, it's quite unique. Norway used the mountains as a remedy for the stress of, uh, stress of modern life. So NOH students often meets up and goes together hiking or travel together for longer hikes during weekends and holidays, wearing skis or boots. So popular trekking routes are, for example, Trolltunga in Hardanger and Charag south of Bergen or the mountains around the city. And before I now will give the word over to Maria, the student here at NHH, I have to end off by saying Bergen is well known for being the gateway to the fjords. And now I would like to give the word over to my, this NHH student, Maria. The floor is yours. Hi, thank you. Hello, everyone. So like you know now, my name is Maria and I'm an, a student at NHH. I'm actually in my last year of my master's degree. Um, and I'm going to start off a short presentation of NHH. So um, NHH is actually a publicly owned business school and was established back in 1936 which makes us the oldest and the only independent uh, public business school here in Norway. And there's about three and a half thousand students at the campus, which is located on the cliff, where, as you can see um, here on the picture, and as Martha said, it's surrounded by beautiful nature, and you can see the seven mountains surrounding the city. So it's a very nice location. Um, also, it's worth to know that as an international student, you're actually guaranteed housing through Summon, which is the student union for all students in Bergen. And also, um, as mentioned, as NHH is a publicly owned business school, that actually means that you're not going to pay any tuition fees while you're here. So uh, there's no tu tuition fees at all, even if you're an international student. Um, but even if there's no uh, tuition fees, it doesn't mean anything that the quality is less. Actually, the quality is very high at NHH and it's a triple crown accredited business school. And it's also part of the SEMS Alliance. So it's high in quality, but also you don't have to pay tuition fees. So that's really nice. Um, OK, so I will now give the word over to Miko, who's going to tell you a bit more about our master program. Yes. So, hi, my name is Mikko and I come from Finland and I'm also in my last year of master's at NHH. And I will talk to you a bit more about our master's degree in economics and business administration. So, the financial time ranking has over the years shown that NHH flagship, the master's in management program, is the highest rated master's program of this kind in Norway. Uh, we'll also go through a bit about our program structure that's very flexible and it consists of major elective course that can uh, have a major in them and a master thesis. And on the next slide, you will see the nine different majors that you can choose from uh, when you're applying to an HH. The master's degree program in economics and business administration is flexible, allowing you to tailor your own academic profile based on your interests and career plans. And as you can see, uh, I think it's safe to say that you can find something based on your interests. For me, ex for example, I chose uh, the major in marketing and brand management because I have always had an interest in branding and would like to work with some of the leading outdoor brands, for example, um, to build their brand and to do product marketing. Business industry and labor market are in constant changes. That's why NHH constantly introduces new subjects and courses that fit these changes. Concrete example is our master's specialization in business analytics, where you learn quantitative analytical tools for the purpose of value creation in businesses. Also, NIJH has an increased commitment to ensure that the students learn sustainability within a lower section of subjects, as well as creating a master specialization in energy, natural resources and environment. And now I will give uh, the word to Molly, who will uh, tell you a bit more about the interna uh, international opportunities. Thank you. So as Miko said, my name is Molly and I am actually from Canada. 
So if one uh, master's degree isn't enough for you, you do have the opportunity to take two degrees in the time that it would actually take to obtain just the one. Um, so this is what I'm doing right now. And I'm on my fifth year um, studying international business as a major from the Ivy School of Business back in Canada, and then strategy as a major at NHH. Uh, the really cool thing about this is that I'm getting a degree from both of the top business schools in Canada, as well as in Norway, which definitely gives me a leg up when entering um, those job markets after school. And then it also kind of allows me to specialize a little bit further and international business and strategy for me pair really well to set me up for my planned career. So this is definitely something to look into if you wanna get a little bit more specialized in your masters. Um, another really cool opportunity that NHH offers is the opportunity to apply for SEMS. And SEMS is actually a global alliance of business schools and companies that cooperate to offer um, the Masters of International Management. Um, and taking that degree means that you get to study with people from all over the world. You take some specific courses that are at NHH, and then you also take um, a semester abroad, as well as an internet. Uh, internship with an international company. And if you want to kind of look for other opportunities besides the SEMS or dual degree, um, there are quite a few different options for you that you can do as an NHH student, and we definitely encourage you to take advantage of. Um, you have the opportunity to work abroad as the NHH International Career Center can kind of help you with um, looking for a job postgrad, but also an internship during uh, your degree. And Anne-Marie is going to talk a little bit more about that later on in our presentation as well. Um, but if you want to stay in Norway, you definitely get the opportunity to build an international network because there are over 300 exchange students that attend NHH every year, in addition to the ones who come uh, for a full-time master's. And Maria is going to go back and talk a little bit more about the student life at NHH. Yes, so hi again. Um, so NHH has a very international campus, but I also want to say that we have one of Norway's most active student associations, which is called um, NHHS, NHHS, <laughs> it's always hard to say, um, and it's the students, they come together and they organize all sorts of events like huge concerts, uh, conferences and charity events, charity fundraisers. Um, and personally, I actually studied in the UK for my bachelor's degree, and I was amazed when I came to Norway because I, I would like the concerts that are in, arranged and stuff are so much fun and everyone's so involved. So that's great. And there's also more than 130 groups to choose from where you can uh, do anything from like sports, uh, like football, and you can also have outdoor clubs that go skiing together or if you want to do or join a club that's more into finance, you can join financial and entrepreneurial groups and so on. So there's really something for everyone. Um, it's also worth to say that students at the Norwegian, uh, at NHH are some of Norway's most satisfied. Um, and a previous survey that was made also showed that the students at NHH feel that their study program is academically challenging. So that's good. It's just not just fun all the time. Um, and it's also worth to say that NHH has, has a large group of alumni, alumni, sorry, and throughout your studies, you're going to meet them, you'll see them at a campus for business presentations, career fairs, and even as mentors for the students. So that's really nice. Um, and we also have a lot of corporate and social partners uh, that the school cooperate with. And um, all these collaborations have the mission of bringing something valuable to us students. So you can get work opportunities or learn for more from business cases, have um, specific uh, lectures from businesses and so on. So that's very cool. And just to summarize everything we just said about NHH, there's a lot of people and resources involved in giving you the great experience that you would want for your master's degree. So um, we've now given you a short presentation about NHH, and now Igul and Heidi will continue a bit more about the, to talk about the admission process and the requirements for that. So thank you. Um, thank you, Maria. 
My name is Aygül. I'm from Azerbaijan and I am studying master's degree at NHH. I'm in the last year and my major is finance here at NHH. So together with me, I have uh, Heidi Sun, head of admissions at NHH, and uh, together with her, we will try to give you a bit more information about the admission process, admission requirements, and answer your questions at the end. So thank, <laughs> thank you, Aigul. Uh, you will start by going through some of the requirements. Um, and we have admission uh, once a year, and the study program starts in August. Um, admission is highly competitive and the listed requirements here is a minimum of being accepted. I will advise you all to look through the admission criteria at the NHH webpage and we have posted everything you need to know there. And Aigul will now go uh, will now talk about the GMAT and other tests um, that is also part of the requirements. Um, yes, one part of the requirements are to submit test results for um, either GMAT or GRA and also for language proficiency. For language proficiency, you can test TOEFL, IELTS or PTA academic and you see the minimum results, minimum um, grades that you need to have for uh, admission requirements. So I personally took GMAT and IELTS, and uh, it took me around two months to prepare for IELTS exam and around two to three months to prepare for GMAT exam. I actually recommend you to start uh, as early as possible to have some time devoted for that uh, exams, but also consider that the time that you need to have for preparation depends on your availability and your starting level. I was working full time at the time uh, at the time of preparation, so it might took uh, a bit shorter if you have more available time. And in the other slide, I will talk more about the process of applying and the rest of the stages. So process went pretty quickly and pretty straightforward for me. I applied online through the student portal and submitted all the documents digitally and after submitting the documents a few weeks later I uh, got an invitation for a Kira interview. So a uh, Kira interview is not a traditional interview, it's an uh, interview with a computer like you get to have uh, pre-recorded questions and uh, it's a chance for you to show your motivation and your qualification, previous background and get to know NHH values better and your expectations about NHH. And after the interview, you will uh, get the offer letter. And uh, after accepting the offer letter, the next stage would be to apply for housing. As Maria said, the, all international students will get a guaranteed housing by a student welfare organization. For example, I myself live uh, at Hatleberg, which is next to NHH, and it's just uh, five, five minutes of uh, walking distance from NHH, and it's a very comfortable choice for me. And after that, uh, it comes to the visa application. And uh, at the time of visa applications, you already will have all the documents required for the visa application provided to you by uh, both NHH and the student uh, welfare organization about this housing uh, contract. And you will need to just document your financial ability and apply for visa. And the process also is uh, very straightforward. You just send your uh, documents to the embassy and uh, wait for an answer. And after coming to Norway, the only thing you need to do is to go to a, a local police, uh, like immigration office, and register your details. So that's it about the admission process. And now we will answer your questions. And 
Um, yeah, thank thank you, Agul. Uh, I hope you all all got some relevant information from Ayu and me. Uh, and here we will be available for questions in the Q and A session in the end of the webinar. And you can always send us an email or contact us on Unibody. Uh, Agul is also one of the persons available to chat with you in Unibody at our web page. I would now love to introduce my colleague on Marie Hara who's the leader of the NHH Career Center. Hi. Hi, everybody. So I'm Anne-Marie and I'm head of NHH Career Center. And uh, this is a very international uh, service uh, since an important part of our job is to facilitate work experience for NHH students um, all, over the, uh, all over the world, but at least abroad. And... Uh, uh, what can we do for you? Uh, some of our services is that we uh, we give individual counselling sessions. Uh, uh, we do enjoy very much to help you identify your career path, uh, and we have uh, we are very available. I would say it's uh, easy to book a counselling session, and uh, it's a pleasure to to meet you. And then uh, we also give uh, career courses uh, and, um, and where we where we examine further, you know, what are your values, what it is really you would like to work with. Um, uh, could, if we uh, our uh, motivation is to help you identify your career path and we design services every semester to that um, to reach that objective. Um, we also uh, we also have with us today two very uh, um, uh, helpful alumni, uh, Alan and Isabella. And uh, I would like just to invite uh, maybe Isabella first to give uh, give uh, tell you something uh, that has been important for her in her career uh, journey so far. Isabella, the floor is yours. Thank you. <clears throat> Sorry for my voice. Uh, yes, so my name is Isabella. I'm speaking to you today from my home office in the suburbs of Oslo. Um, I'm originally from, from Poland. I uh, came to Norway back in fall 2015 to study my master's at, at the NHH. Um, after NHH, I, I joined the graduate program at Microsoft and spent there a couple of, of years. Then after then moved on more to the startup world where I am right now. Um, in terms of, kind of what was... Uh, what has been important for me in, in, in my career, I think uh, what has been mentioned before in terms of NHH and that the kind of value it brings both in terms of the academic level, but also international exposure. That was very important to me when I was choosing the university to, uh, to study my master's at in Norway and also the vibrant community and the, um, the student community and the organizations uh, one could be, can be active um, at both in terms of kind of professional development, but also social um, and, and sports, uh, for example. I think it's the combination of that and the diversity of different activities one can uh, take part in and different uh, people one can meet, uh, that together helps you to build kind of a, a very valuable package that uh, both um, helps to, to distinguish yourself at the job market later on, um, but also brings you kind of the skills uh, necessary to succeed in the job market. Uh, so, so I would say that's kind of the uh, the most valuable uh, thing, or one of the most valuable things I, I took out of the study. So it's the overall package that you have found in uh, very... Uh, yeah, the combination, yeah. the combination, right? So the diversity of it, uh, I think okay. that's very important to... Um, in the current times where we have to be flexible, we have to adapt, and there is like kind of a, a broad set of skills one has to have in order to be successful. And uh, to you, Alan, what would you like to tell us about your journey so far? Definitely. Um, I'll give a small introduction for myself. So I'm from Canada, named Alan, obviously. Um, I would preface this by saying the biggest thing that has been successful for me was being willing to try new things and get uncomfortable and do something that's maybe not the easiest thing for you. Um, so for myself, taking kind of the leap moving from Canada to Norway was obviously a big change. I did it at the tail end of the pandemic. So it was something that wasn't exactly the easiest decision to make. But I would say that 
being willing to kind of go forward and make those changes um, is something that's really available to you at NHH. It provides a lot of opportunity for you to be able to really figure out what you like for yourself, try new things, join new clubs, um, have more social events with people. And for myself, that led um, led to me now moving on into London. So I'm working here at Bloomberg in London as an account manager in mutual funds and ETFs. And I didn't think that I really had a passion for that till kind of attending NHH, working with professors, talking to people. And, and so I really, I, th I think having a willingness to take that leap forward, uh, take, take kind of a step forward into something that you don't know and test out a new opportunity or test out a new area that you don't exactly think you, you maybe might not have a passion for at the start, but really find it for yourself and discover it. Yeah, and I think that that what you talk when you talked about passion, I also think that uh, I would like to mention that we have several internship programs at NHH uh, that have evolved over the last few years. Uh, as an international student uh, and also as an Norwegian student, you can join uh, Innovation School, for instance, uh, where an internship in in Germany uh, that NHH has. Uh, uh, found so we have a cooperation with about 40 uh, German employers and uh, so that is one possibility uh, it's also the possibility of uh, taking an internship international students could take an internship in Norway uh, where you get uh, 7.5 uh, ECTS it's an it's uh, it's not mandatory but it's something you can choose and uh, you can also um, uh, so you can, you have ample I would say ample opportunities to choose um, to go for an internship, and I also think that uh, we do we do we do um, uh, I think that international uh, working opportunities are, are very um, uh, feasible for NHH students. You are attractive uh, both on the international and the uh, uh, and the national uh, labor market. Uh, so my I would I would just say, and then Alan and Isabella can say what they think, but I would say that NHH is a good choice in terms of uh, work opportunities, job opportunities. Yeah. What would you say, uh, Isabella, first? Yeah, I would definitely say that's true, and kind of that was also uh, the important factor for me when I was choosing the, the university, what kind of job opportunities it would give me, uh, or the advantage when uh, applying for jobs both nationally and internationally as well. Because when I was choosing uh, the university back in 2014, I wasn't yet sure which country I would settle in. So I was looking for kind of that flexibility and and really a, an institution that would give me a good position after graduation, both in Norway if I choose to stay, which I eventually did, uh, but also internationally, right? So, so I think that's uh, definitely an, a, a big advantage of, of the NHH. And also the international opportunities, and and I also did on, on top of my master's, um, the main master's program, some um, master in international management, and and did exchange through that program. So the opportunities in terms of um, going uh, abroad and then do exchange in different countries are are ample. And Elon, you chose uh, to go out of Norway again. How, uh, that, how, was that an easy choice? It was not. That was not an easy choice to make. No, no, no. London is quite beautiful. It's a lot of fun. But I mean, as you see by the background they have on, Bergen specifically is is really a, just a beautiful place. Um, I, I would say, though, on top of kind of seeing new things, the career aspect there or having a lot of the internships, NHH has a phenomenal amount of companies that come to present to them or talk to them or student groups that try to travel to Oslo, visit a whole bunch of different companies with a student group. So you really gain exposure or you're able to just kind of stop in, hear what a company's talking about, be that in consulting, energy, but any of the kind of fields that want to come and present. And really, like, you can kind of take advantage of exploring and learning more about, like, maybe a job or a career path that you never really thought about having them having someone from the company come and present to you or going to their office is a really good opportunity and I was really amazed by how many different presenters in different industries were covered by NHH so that was an amazing part of kind of figuring out for myself where I wanted to go and, and what I wanted to do. Uh, that Alan is also a very important compliment to NHH that Maria talked about. Uh, our student union uh, is doing a great job in bringing in companies uh, for you to talk with. And uh, and they, as you said, Alan, they do excursions. And also uh, we just recently, Career Services, we work closely with, uh, with uh, the um, Student Association. 
but we also organized a trip to Stockholm uh, to visit Bank of America, uh, Lassard, other financial institutions, and they welcomed our students in a fantastic way uh, with uh, amazing uh, case uh, uh, case setups and uh, and I think it also showed very much the eagerness of inter uh, international uh, employers to get in touch with uh, with NHH students. Just to, to add to that, I'd also say it's the alumni connections you make, like the, the amount of different industry my friends from school are now working in, the people I still have contact with, like the careers they go on to after the friends you make at school. It, it is a really important aspect of where you go and in, in, in the kind of atmosphere of the school. Excellent. I totally agree with that. You meet a lot of NHH alumni uh, here in Oslo as well. Whichever place you go and whichever foreign you attend, there's always someone uh, from NHH. And it brings us closer together, right? Because you have this, this one uh, more cool topic to talk about, which is uh, kind of reflecting over, um, over time back in the university. Mm. So I hope to see many of you uh, as uh, at the Career Center at NHH, and uh, we would love to show you uh, show you what we can do for you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Anne Marie. And uh, I have to to add also when we're talking about alumni, uh, because we always uh, we we used to travel around to different cities for alumni events uh, outside Norway. We're actually going to London now and. In November alone, so we hope that you you will come to to visit uh, the alumni event. <laughs> so that just shows how um, yeah how they stay connected. <laughs> so do you guys uh, so Alon and Isabella, uh, do you have any like advice to give to the the people now that is like in this now very tough uh, choice on where to study and yeah any any advice along the way. Alon? I can jump in, yeah. Um, in terms of like where to study and where, where to pick, I would say for what to study specifically, we do offer a wide variety. I mean, like the bachelor's program is amazing, but for me, I did a um, double degree in business analytics. So I would say for myself, I knew I had kind of a passion, a little bit more for like the technical, the data side, but think about the industry like you want to be working in and think about how your degree can kind of line up for that because I think you can do a lot of discovery by working with your professors, kind of picking the right program for yourself and, and following through with that. So uh, that would be one advice for kind of picking, I guess, what to study, but where to study as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's again, like I, it kind of goes back to the points that I raised. It's like the people that you meet, the atmosphere that the university has. And obviously it's a very competitive school to get into, but it's a mm -hmm. very, very welcoming community. Like I've had probably one of the best years of my life attending there and I do it in Norway. So the, yeah. the place that you're in also matters quite a bit. So yeah. it's not hard to enjoy yourself with the seven mountains, the oceans, the forests. So <laughs> yeah, but that's that's great, great to hear, Alon. And I just to add to that also, when when he said, for example, um, that he goes the the major in business analytics, you can as as uh, Miko also was saying, being flexible, you can combine like uh, Ayul, for example, she has the finance major and the minor in business analytics, showing that it's very flexible and you can really tailor it uh, the way you want to do it. So it's it's really it's really nice. And uh, thank you so much, uh, Alon. Uh, I hope you will stick around now a little bit for the Q&A session to see if there's any questions regarding your life in London. Um, Isabella, do you have any final like advice for the for the applicants? <laughs> Yeah, I would say definitely going up to support what Stalin just uh, just said, and also I think in terms of um, from when I kind of think about uh, me seven years back, I think the choice of the kind of the institution to take masters is very important. It should be kind of evaluated really thoroughly, and and you should always kind of weigh what's important for you. But if you're looking for a, a very vibrant international uh, and Norwegian community of students and, and a lot of kind of diversity in terms of what you can do and an amazing uh, location because that's uh, what made me stay in Norway as well, although I moved to the uh, it was Bergen that made me fall in love with, with Norway um, and I think is definitely a, a, a great choice. Mm. Thank you so much and also hope also that you stick around a little bit to see if there's uh, any questions. 
Um, so uh, we've been through uh, our agenda for today. I uh, would like to say that all the students uh, and also admissions team, uh, Heidi mentioned it, but I want to mention it again so that you guys know that they are all available on Unibody at NIJH webpage. And this is really something we encourage you to do if you have any questions regarding everything from how it is to apply or how it is to live in Bergen, what to pack if you get accepted, anything regarding how to meet the Bergen culture, what to, yeah, how is it living there? Uh, please feel free to, to reach out to the student assistants. And of course, if you want to see how life is at NIJH, we encourage you to, of course, follow us on all the social media channels. We are on all of them. We even started our own TikTok channels. Do you want to have the more humoristic side? Uh, it's very nice to see. And from time to time, we have our own uh, Rektor Eisten. He's sometimes on our TikTok channel. Uh, and I have to add that to the end here because this is something that really, I think I can speak on uh, behalf of uh, the students and also the alumni is that the flat hierarchy in Scandinavia and also in NHH is something to really highlight. The fact that you can go and knock on the door at the professor's office and you can, the uh, uh, director will stop by you in the hallway, ask how you're doing. The, the hierarchy is very flat, meaning that it's very easy to connect with people in leading positions or in faculty, the, the, the balance, it's very, very flat. So it's, it's really, it's a really good and informal atmosphere, uh, I would, I would say. So I think I, I see some uh, nodding heads. So I think I have some, uh, <laughs> I have, I, I have, uh, yeah, I have the support of the others to say that. And that's really nice. And it's, that's part of the Scandinavian culture as well. Um, so I think we're ready now. If uh, does anybody have anything to add uh, at the end before we start in a Q and A session? Oh, okay. okay then I think then. Yeah, yeah, I think we're ready for the Q and A session then. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, yeah. I just uh, would like to thank you to thank all our speakers for all the valuable information you share. It was really inspiring to get in about your institution and also about Norway and I just wanted to tell our audience that in case you joined us after the beginning uh, of the webinar uh, or in case you missed some details we will send over an email soon with the registration of the event and we are now ready to answer the questions we received so we have quite a lot of questions and we'll try to answer as many as possible uh, however, uh, we'll make sure to forward all the remaining questions uh, to NHH and of course, as Martha was mentioning, feel free to, write, to reach out uh, directly with the, and get in touch directly with the institution. So uh, let's start uh, with the questions. I just noted down some of them that arrived through the chat. So some of the students uh, uh, were asking if there's any scholarship available for specific countries, developing countries, uh, or uh, to cover, for example, living costs in Norway. Shall I answer that maybe? <laughs> um... In Norway, we have free tuition for the most part, so we don't have a very strong culture for offering any grants or scholarships. And you wouldn't need one to go to Norway. You have to, to document you can uh, actually support yourself if you're outside the EU or EA. Uh, but besides that, you, you wouldn't need a, a scholarship. Uh, we do offer a very limited uh, amount of scholarships and we will contact the students admitted that we uh, see as eligible for applying for those scholarships. That is the way we do it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I also uh, yeah. would just like to add also if you uh, come to Norway on a student visa, it's very good chances to have part time jobs. Uh, a lot of students have part-time jobs next to their full-time studies, so it's um, it's quite normal in Norway for for students to have that. And uh, yeah, so that's also a good thing to add that, that that's possible when you come uh, as international student. 
Thank you, Heidi and Marta. And then we have uh, some questions about uh, English and the English requirements. Some students are asking if uh, uh, the English test is mandatory, also if they come from an English speaking countries or if they uh, got their bachelor's degree in English. It is actually uh, a bit hard to say online uh, whether you are exempted or not, but our admission pages, which I have linked to in some of the answered questions already, um, you will find all the requirements for language proficiency and you will see there a list of the kind of students or applicants that will be exempted from the language requirements. And of course, this is a perfect question to ask our ambassadors at uh, Unibody. Thank you, Heidi. Uh, also, we have uh, a student asking if after the master uh, it is possible to continue with a PhD in economics. Yes, it is. Um, if you are a top student, you need an average of B or higher, and you need a keen interest in research and teaching, uh, and you have to apply for the PhD, uh, both as a program and as a job. Um, and if you are exempted, it is fully paid um, for four years and you will be a part of an excellent research and teaching community at NHH. Great. And then we have a question from Walid. I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing your name correctly. Uh, so um, the question is uh, that uh, um, Walid is an undergrad undergraduate student from BS the seventh semester. And uh, uh, he is having, is been doing the bachelor program in public administration with CZ, CGPA uh, 3.95. And uh, he would like, he would like to pursue his career in economics master program. Can um, can he apply for it? Um. Everyone can apply, uh, but then we will have to see if the requirements within uh, economics and mathematics and methodological uh, uh, issues are met. And you also have to meet the other requirements. So I would uh, see and do a good self-assessment uh, after reading our admission pages thoroughly and then uh, send in an application if I saw I was a fit. Okay, thank you very much. And then we have Ben asking, was uh, studied a Master of Science in Sweden and got graduated in 2007, and is interested in the strategy management program at NHH. So uh, will all the admission requirements apply to him since he had the, the, his Master of Science from the Graduate School of Business in Sweden? I see uh, it is yeah. like writing something. <laughs> yeah, uh, that is actually hard for me to say on the spot. And it would be the same answer for Ben as the last uh, the questionnaire. So you have to see at our uh, admission pages yourself if you are a fit for our um, our demands and uh, you have to meet all the documentation requirements and you will of course you can ask uh, at Unibody and they can look into your uh, questions more thoroughly and you can send an email to admission at nhh.no. Thank you very much for the answer. And uh, we have so we have quite many questions about the admission for the admission <laughs> process and requirements, and it's actually great. Uh, so we have Jose asking to schedule if, if it's possible to schedule a meeting with the council to clarify uh, a little bit more about the applying process to NHH. I guess the answer is yes. But if you have more details to add, I, I just feel free to integrate. 
Yes, uh, I would start at Unibody and then I would uh, try to schedule an um, appointment with one of our advisors. And uh, of course, we will have a couple of uh, Q&As or how to tailor your application webinars through the entire application uh, process until the deadline of 15th of February. So we will try to help you all along the way. So just ask and keep your eyes up for the uh, for the webinars. They are especially targeted to our applicants. Perfect. Thank you. And then we have Ellen Moore in Anonymous asking if uh, it's needed to document any financial ability during the application process. If, for example, someone is uh, applying from outside Europe. Yes, you will. And uh, again, you have to go to our admission pages and then the financial ability documentation uh, requirement will be listed in detail and you will see uh, what you have to document and also the uh, current amount and will help you all along the way. And again, use Unibody, use admission at NHH.no and, and keep, uh, keep your eyes open and join our webinars. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, we have Arsha asking uh, in which season programs actually get started. Martha, would you like yeah. to answer yeah. the question? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I uh, just had to find the mute button. So uh, our program starts in August. So typically in the middle of August. So people tend to come then uh, in beginning of uh, like quite early in August. So they have one one to one and a half week uh, to get uh, to get uh, settled in in Bergen. Thank you, Marta, for your answer. And also, we have a question from the from someone who is already working, actually. So, and Noah is asking, uh, what are the chances for someone with fifteen year work experience and with the first degree in accountancy uh, to get admitted to your program? Um, the chances, I, I wouldn't know until I, I saw your documentation and your uh, original bachelor uh, degree. Uh, work experience is not something we consider when it comes to our full-time program. That would be something for the MBA. Uh, so we will uh, consider your bachelor degree and your test results as we do with all our applicants. Thank you. We have also a couple of questions from Greece. Uh, so um, our um, guest is asking if it's difficult to learn Norwegian, and if so, if it's necessary to know the language to live in Norway. And also we have a second question uh, regarding the part-time job. Uh, as uh, um, we've been asked if uh, the salary is enough to support the lifestyle in Norway and Bergen. Uh, I think maybe Isabella can start off with the language question and how, I mean, you speak uh, Norwegian, Isabella, and, and you are our international student, so. <laughs> yeah, so <clears throat> um, is, it, is it difficult to learn Norwegian? Hard to say, depending on kind of where you're coming from. Uh, I came to Norway from Germany, uh, and I used to speak fluent German, so it helped me a lot to learn Norwegian as well. Uh, and I was very motivated when I decided to stay in Norway, which was uh, pretty quickly after coming to Bergen. Uh, I put a lot of effort into learning Norwegian. Um, so, so kind of a couple of, I guess, hours a day, even I would say. Um, so hard to answer in general how difficult it is, but it's definitely possible. If you have some sort of uh, kind of, I know, German or, or that kind of, uh, or even English actually, um, in terms of grammar, um, knowledge from before, it is definitely helpful. It will be certain time and effort needed uh, to to learn, but of course possible. Uh, and uh, depending on your motivation, uh, more or less easy. Um, in terms of part-time jobs, so um, 
in my case, it wasn't the problem. So I was working in a hotel in the reception at the night shift uh, while studying. I also had a couple of um, uh, of jobs or tasks I was doing at the, actually at the NHH. So I was also a teaching assistant for English course at the bachelor's level. So it's definitely possible to get a part-time job. For some, you will need a region, uh, or at least when I was uh, studying at the NHH, that was seven years ago. Um, you, you needed no region, maybe that has changed. Uh, but in terms of being able to support your lifestyle at the, um, at the student side or part-time job, it is possible, again, depending on your lifestyle as well. Yeah, so, so a lot of dependencies, but like if you have a kind of fairly average spend per, per, per month, don't party too much, because that's a bit expensive. <laughs> um then it shouldn't be a problem i managed also to save for my exchange semester in chile and managed to travel quite a lot while being in chile and in south america so definitely possible thank you and i just would like to add also when i mean uh, we don't have time to have have the round around the table but uh if you guys are curious you can also I know that Ayul has been taking the Norwegian course at NIH that the NIH is offer. So she is learning Norwegian and Mikko, he is getting quite good in Norwegian. I've had a couple of conversation like phrases with him. So uh, it and of course, it's really it depends, but uh, it's really good opportunities. But I think learning Norwegian is a really good uh, benefit if you choose to to stay in, in Norway and, and NIH can help you great along the way with that in terms of courses and maybe even part-time jobs, so. Thank you, Isabelle and Martha for your answer. And then we have uh, uh, someone asking if it's possible to apply to a PhD, PhD program, sorry for that, at the, right after the bachelor's degree. No, no. Uh, you need to have a master's degree before uh, applying for the PhD. Okay, thank you. And uh, also we have some someone who joined us after the beginning of the webinar who's asking for a quick recap of the admission criteria and requirements. I don't know if maybe ID or someone else can go quickly through the, the <laughs> I can find I, thank you. <laughs> we'll do that on the fly. Um yes, I will just give a link to our admission pages and you can find all the necessary uh requirements there. And I see that Martha is also sharing the requirements. Yeah. Thank you. And then we have a, an anonymous asking um, from India, I guess, uh, that he has completed the Bachelor of Taxation degree and is currently pursuing SAA, SAP, Software Accounting. So is it possible in this case to apply for a Master in Finance or does the program require um, finance or specifically in economics background? It's the same requirements based on all specializations that you have at the NHH. And, and as we just showed the slide, that's the combination of the bachelor. Uh, so when you apply for, for finance, the combination is that, uh, no matter if you want to do strategy or other um, other majors. Uh, Heidi, is there something you want to add to that? Or is that, that's true, right? <laughs> yeah, but it is uh, so. it yeah. is uh, it is quite flexible, and you do choose. It, it's the base that you have to have a bachelor in business administration uh, in the in the bottom of your <laughs> degree, and then uh, you can try. You can do finance or others. Yeah. Thank you, Martha. And then we have kind of a statistics question. So an anonymous is asking how many applications NHH receives per year for masters and how many get accepted on um, average. So, yeah, yes. so Heidi would probably know the exact uh, exact the number uh, since she's now, I don't know if she she lost the connection. Um, it's quite actually today is quite bad rain. 
so some people might lose power uh, in in the area now. <laughs> Uh, but uh, at least uh, what I can say is that we typically accept around 100 to 120 full-time master um, students every year that starts at the NHH. And they are starting, uh, we're typically around 500, mm. over 500 uh, masters. And then we have 300 that comes typically from the bachelor in, at the NHH that then starts and goes from ba bachelor to master's. So then around 800 and 100 to 120 of them are master. And in terms of how many, that varies a lot, uh, but it, it's quite a lot. It's it, We get a lot of applicants. So it's um, I don't have the number in front of me right now because I'm afraid if I click something. Yeah, now Heidi is back. Yeah, sorry, yeah. my headset died. <laughs> okay, no, uh, the number of applicants said, uh, like the average number of applicants uh it for international MSE, uh 1200 approximately yeah thank you <laughs> thank you and also we have lucrezia from italy which is studying a, um, a bachelor in business administration and uh, is asking uh, how much in advance do you advise to start the admission process I think Ayu can give some very good answers to that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yes, I think the main uh, thing that takes time is to have the exams done. If uh, you're not exempt from GMAT or IELTS, you need to uh, have some time to prepare those exams. And uh, after like um, completed the exam, you need to contact your exam authorization to send the original documents, original test results directly to uh, NHH and that also can take like a week depending on the uh, on the organization so uh, other than that the uh, documentation you basically submit all the required documents through the online portal so you don't need to send anything uh, physically through post um, so that's the only time taking part is the exams and the having your results submitted uh, to NHH. Um, yeah, that's that's mostly it. Thank you, Egun. And also, I would like to ask if uh, it is necessary to actually get a bachelor degree before uh, applying to uh, a program at NHH, or if it, it is possible to apply even if like a little bit before the graduation. It's, it is possible to to apply before you have graduated your bachelor's degree, and uh, we will then look at your first five semesters and you will have a conditional admission if uh, we uh, think that you are eligible. Uh, then all you have to do is finish your bachelor degree and send the documentation of uh, the finished degree to us. And we also have a thorough documentation control every autumn. Uh, so you need to bring all your papers to NHH and show them physically to us. Thank you, Heidi. And also we now go back to part-time jobs. Uh, and uh, what I would like to ask if the university provides any support to students in finding a part-time job or if they have to do everything on their own. Anne Marie. <laughs> I would say that uh, what we do uh, help with is that we have some internships uh, at Norwegian companies, uh, but there are more students than there are internships. But we also have we have job teaser where where the companies can post uh, vacancies, and also the student union. Uh, in general, I would say yes, we provide uh, some help and some assistance, but also this is also something you have to do on your own. And uh, Isabella, I think that you 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 had to kind of knock on some doors to find uh, your uh, additional part-time jobs. And um, yeah, I think um, so a bit of help, but a lot of, of uh, self uh, 
employment in order to find a, a job. Thank you, Anne-Marie. And also, uh, while Isabella was talking about her experience in Chile, uh, what I would like to ask if uh, NHH provides also language courses going beyond uh, English and Norwegian, like to support students in the, their exchange programs. Martha? I do have other language uh, that teaches like English and I do Spanish, um, Japanese, Japanese, French. yeah, Japanese, French, but I think that they are mo uh, mostly used as uh, electives mm, at a yeah. bachelor's level. Mm. Um, and when it comes to international study possibilities, NHH has a really uh, excellent network of uh, partner schools. Uh, so you can basically go to whatever country in the world. And uh, uh, so there's, I think, more like 150 um, partner schools. And about 60% of NHH students, they choose to go on exchange during uh, their uh, studies, and master studies in Bergen. And then sometimes for international students, I've met quite a few international students, that prefer to stay in Norway throughout uh, their studies uh, because this is an international uh, option for you guys. And many of you have also been many places before you come to Norway. So, but the uh, international possibilities, study possibilities are ample. Thank you very much, Marie, for your answer. And also, I would like to ask- I see uh, Isabella has a hand up. I don't, I'm not sure uh, if she wants to sorry. comment on uh, <laughs> yeah, so if I may just to add to that in terms of language courses. So yes, uh, for example, for me in Spanish, right, it is on the offered in the bachelor level, but I was able to attend as kind of, uh, let's say, as a volunteer, so it wouldn't, it wouldn't count on my, on my certificate or graduation uh, certificate at the end, but I was allowed to attend classes together with bachelor students uh, just to learn. So it is option as well. And, I think it was mentioned for kind of this partnership and the flat hierarchy and the kind of partnership between professors and students. Uh, and this is an evidence of that, right? That say you are allowed to join a class, even though you are not kind of participating officially, but you're allowed to gain the knowledge uh, you want. Thank you very much. Yes, and the languages are French, German, Japanese, English, and Spanish. Thank you. <laughs> Wow, that's great. And uh, what I would like to ask uh, um, the alumni of NHH is maybe they would like to share a little bit of their experience uh, after graduation when it came to uh, find a job. So uh, maybe they can just share their experience uh, um, on how they felt about looking for a job if they wanted to stay in Norway or were looking for job opportunities abroad and what they think uh, is the added value that uh, studying at NHH provided to their career. Sure, uh, I can hop into that one. Uh, I would say biggest advice for job after like uh, school to start early and think about what you want to do because like a lot of companies operate in like certain windows on when they post jobs or, or when they kind of do recruitment periods so always be thinking about a little bit early what you want to do um i would say for nhj specifically the projects that you do in class um at least i can speak for myself for business analytics were incredibly applicable to the job market and they were really good to be able to talk about in interviewing because a lot of it's hands-on quite recent you talk both about research reports, but as well build your own kind of projects out. And so it really gives you a lot of actionable things to bring up in an interview where someone asks you something, can you give me an example of working with this or doing this? And so a lot of them, a lot of them are very applicable for when you're interviewing or when you're kind of starting a new job, they teach you a lot of skills that you do need to have. Um, honestly, I, I miss Norway quite a bit. London is a great time. Uh, it was a tough decision coming out here, but I think that's one of the advantages of going to a very well-recognized uh, business school is that you are able to kind of branch and leave the place that it's in. It's not like it's only known locally to just Norway. So you do have the option to stay there if you want to. I will say that it's like, uh, I was considering that quite a bit. The move to London was a choice that that was made. Um, 
but overall, yeah, start early, think about where you want to kind of end up. And then also make sure that when you're doing kind of your class selection, your thesis, the other projects you do, thinking about how that can kind of line up and, and move you forward into a career. So in terms of kind of my story, a little bit of a different one. So um, I was actually planning to, or, or uh, dreamed about it for staying in the shipping industry. So I also uh, chose a master's in energy, natural resources and environments. And then I, uh, I chose uh, shipping and transportation at my specialization. Uh, but given the fact that, that uh, back in 2012, uh, sorry, 15, uh, shipping was in a bit of a downturn as it's a very technical industry. Um, there wasn't necessarily that many internship and, and job positions there, uh, but I kept kind of open mind and that's how I, I ended up in Microsoft, even though I never planned a career in, in, in tech sector. Um, and I ended up actually directly through NHH because uh, I was doing my, my SEMS uh, master's then and I was leading in SEMS club, which is a student organization supporting SEMS program at NHH. And, uh, and Microsoft was organizing a seminar. So I, through the student organization, was coordinating the organization of the seminar together with Microsoft. And through that, uh, I got to know about the graduate program and then was encouraged to apply and, and eventually ended up uh, with a job at Microsoft. So, so I think it, it feels of like it's important you have, uh, you know what's your passion and you choose the courses that are aligned with what you're interested in and the industry you want to work within later, but at the same time, uh, in the time you are uh, right now, so I think it's important to be flexible and, and kind of open-minded and grab the opportunities as, as they arise, um, and then evaluate them based on uh, how, uh, how you, you kind of feel and how you, you feel that they kind of, they can help you in your future career. So that'll be kind of my advice and, and, and my story. Thank you, Ella and Isabella. I, I really think that your answers and advice were inspiring and also very, very wise. Uh, so my last question uh, would be uh, if any one of you has any suggestion to make an application stand out during the admission process. Um. Are you do you have any advice or uh, should me and Heidi give some? <laughs> I, I can say something quick as well. Yeah. Because I also did that interview that um, I gold mentioned earlier, the, yeah. which is not a face-to-face -face interview. It's a recorded interview on your computer. And I think uh, prior to that interview, I uh, Googled a bit about NHH and found some facts about it to sh really show that I was keen and that I knew what NHH was. So a tip would be to maybe show your interests on the um, interview and you don't really need to prepare anything for the interview, but I think it's a good idea to think for yourself what your motivation to go to NHH would be. So that would be my tip, at least for the application. And that's a great tip, uh, Maria. I think, uh, mm -hmm. I think that's, uh, yeah, absolutely. And that's why I said always follow us also on social media because then you really see how how life is at the NHH. <laughs> yeah, and uh, my tip would be also about the exams. Uh, I would like to suggest you to start as early as possible for preparing those exams and make sure that you will be able to get a get the required level because it's uh, it's sometimes time consuming to reschedule the exam and finding time slots and stuff like that so it's a mandatory and important part of the application and also for the Kira interview uh, I would recommend uh, as Maria said to research NHH and make sure that uh, what you expect from your master's degree is in alignment with what NHH can offer you and show how motivated you are. It's like uh, interview with uh, pre-recorded questions and also uh, be calm and be yourself and don't worry, like you will have the preview of the interview when you get the inter uh, invitation. And also you will get to see one uh, example question that you will have some idea what to prepare for. So if you do this, I'm sure that you'll be able to stand out with your application. And good luck. 
That's excellent uh, advice. Um, it is not only important that you are a fit for NHH, it's also very important that NHH is a fit for you. It's it's a special school. We have high demands and um, excellent students and you need to be motivated to go far north and uh, have the experience of your life. Thank you very much for your advice. Uh, I would like to thank again all our speakers for their time, their interesting experience, and also thank all our participants for, not, for connecting with us today. And we really hope this session was useful for you and for your future. And as I was mentioning, you will receive an email with a link to the registration of the event. Uh, and the contact information to get directly in touch with NHH. So uh, grab that opportunity uh, and we look forward to connecting with you again in the upcoming events and uh, why not maybe see you at NHH. So thank you again to everybody for your time and for sharing your experience and advices. And it was amazing to have this session together with NHH. Thank you very much.